Hello, Mana TV viewers. Welcome to Healthy Life, The Vegan Way. I'm your host, Kalindi. Healthy Life, The Vegan Way is a series in collaboration with World Vegan Vision, a nonprofit organization whose mission is to encourage people to a more kind and compassionate way of life. They do this by spreading the love of veganism, vegan lifestyle for your health, for animal welfare, and for the conservation of our planet. Today, we are back with Dr. Shaniksha, the president of World Vegan Vision, and Ms. Neetu Jindal, the secretary of New Jersey chapter of World Vegan Vision. For those who are just joining us, Dr. Shah is a physician with over 35 years of practice in internal medicine, and he has been vegan for over 20 years. Throughout his journey, Dr. Shah has spread and still continues to spread the love of veganism and spirituality to his patients, friends, and everyone around him. He strongly recommends a vegan lifestyle to prevent, reverse, manage chronic diseases. Not only that, but just for a healthy life and for your mind and soul. Neetu Jindal is, a, is an attorney. She is secretary of New Jersey chapter of World Vegan Vision. She has been a vegan for over 24 years. Um, and her story is very unique. She adopted veganism to stand up for those unheard voices. As a college student, she saw a video about atrocities on dairy cows and uh, the torture they were subjected to, which became a turning point in her life. Overnight, she turned vegan and it has been 24 years since then. Uh, since then, she's taken up a path to fight against animal cruelty. She volunteers her time exposing cruel farm for, uh, you know, factory farming practices and engages in outreach activities and spreads awareness about veganism. Her mission in life is to create a kinder world for animals. She has, she's mom to a nine-year-old son, Nirvan, who she raised vegan and he follows mom's pursuit as an animal rights activist. Welcome Dr. Shah and Neetu. Thank you. Uh, so today uh, we will be continuing our discussion where we left off from last week, um, discussion about dairy farming, uh, poultry farming and the cruelty, uh, how animals are these uh, animals who are just from birth, they are just you know, raised to end up on a plate. Um, and last week we discussed, uh, we showed you certain irrefutable and disturbing facts about how, what kind of treatment these animals go through. So today uh, we are going to talk more about it and show you some, you know, graphic images that you will see how torturous life these animals are, you know, they are forced to live. So uh, let's begin our discussion today on, you know, the fact behind how a cheeseburger, a hot dog, a piece of steak, pork chops, mutton, how all these, uh, you know, uh, dishes you, we are, you, as you know, we, are, we relish, how these end up from a factory farm to your dinner table. So uh, Dr. Shah, if we can, uh, you know, start with um, how are, you, you know, our idea about this chickens, walking around in the farms and, you know, in happy farms and how do they end up where they end up? Yeah, I would like to uh, share some slides. I think the, uh, the picture is uh, worth more than a thousand words. And all these pictures are real, uh, but they are graphic. And uh, I just uh, want uh, the viewers to understand uh, that there is uh, some element of uh, uh, graphic nature with these images, but but they are the facts and they are the reality. And sometimes, as Nituji always tells me, he said, Dr. Shah, sometimes these things are necessary to wake up some people at least. Uh, and, and that is the way, that is the whole purpose of this show. So uh, I'm sorry about the graphic images, but I think uh, it, they are necessary. Uh, so let me bring you up. Uh, so uh, I'm going to start with uh, this uh, animal cruelty. This is my a basic slide which shows the affectionate uh, uh, bond uh, between a cow being the mother and the calf being the child. And, but this is where this is, it does not really exist. Even though the love exists between them, the reality is that very few calves really end up staying close to their mothers. So uh, because of our desire for, for the milk, we end up separating this mother 
and the child and which is atrocity which is an atrocious act that we humans are doing on the animals so that's why we're really trying to bring this show to really uh, make you aware that the, your food choices can change not just you but even the whole world and this is how we're going to show you uh, so this you think that these cows are really roaming free in the in the nature and in the grass and you see on the milk cartons and all those things but it really is not the case they are all tied up with these cages and cages and cages and the farms are filled with these kind of cows and this they really have no room to wiggle and they're fed the food staying at one spot they're continuously standing without any rest and all these atrocities are continuously being conducted because this is the most economical way of handling the cows if they are roaming free in the in the farms it's going to be impossible to go and collect every single cow when it's time for for milking them so this is not going to happen uh, the same thing and the fainting in a different structure the cows are continuously circulating and and this is how the milk is continuously being done in a row after row after row the cows are being subjected to this punishment where they are continuously standing on one place and this is really very very uncomforting and just like you said last time these cows don't see daylight um, right they never see any daylight so they have to be built up uh, with the immunity they in the getting the antibiotics uh, and uh, so because they are so close to each other and because the infections don't take over and make the cows sick they are loaded with antibiotics and like we said earlier the same antibiotics we are given when we go to the doctors and then is that the same antibiotics being used for the animals and we think that how come these infections are not going away that is not a surprise because through the milk through the meat all these antibiotics are coming into our body and when we have a little bit sick these bacteria are already exposed to those antibiotics through our diet and they, it's not a surprise that these antibiotics don't do the job but uh, the milk is really a, a stealing phenomenon uh, because really the the milk is supposed to be for the baby calf but that is the only man is the only industry um, in, in the world a man is the only animal that is supporting that big industry like this where the milk is stolen away from another animal's mother and that's not just for 6 months like the baby calf does or our baby does 6 months 8 months and then they quit but we keep on drinking milk for the rest of our life and this is what's causing the the unimaginable cruelty on the calves and the cows what do you think nitu i totally agree with what you're saying doctor um humans happen to be the only species that drinks the milk of another species even within for example the monkey community right monkey species that you will never see uh, a, a, a you know a langur monkey for example drinking gorilla's milk even within the even within the species we don't do that you don't see a, a a cat drinking a dog's milk you know we are the only animal that can drink another species milk we cause so much pain to these animals um as you've rightly said these are you know these animals are put through like the picture that you have right now is is of a dairy farm which is probably uh, the better you know the the best case scenario actually where then this cow is not actually, even though she's tied up she is not rotating on those machines that you showed earlier you know correct right. yeah so we we put them through so much trauma i mean they are just as feeling and and the fearing loving animals as as we are you know they 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 also have ptsd like we do they go through depression as we do but we don't consider any of that and we put them through all of this um pain just just for a taste of milk or a steak or you know it's just a matter of a few seconds of taste pretty much as you know you know taste only lasts for a few seconds on your on and when it goes out your throat you don't want to feel the taste but for these animals it's a lifetime of torture just for that we yeah. talked about the artificial insemination last time that yeah. it was really atrocious and this is what really turned me off like i mentioned in the last show that artificial insemination is literally a rape uh, on a on a cow because it's not different than a a, a woman uh, being impregnated against her own will 
So I will not get too much into the details because we have a lot of other things to talk about. Uh, and this is a machine that is used to punch the numbers on the cow's ears. You can imagine if anything like that is used on our ears, it, it, it will be really severe agony. And But these cows go through this suffering frequently. Can you explain why are they numbered, uh, Nituji? Sure. So they have such a lot of cattle. This is one of the methods to, to number the, the cows. Is another one called branding. And branding actually is a hot iron. It actually, if you see the next picture, you can actually, yes, I just saw it, like with, with, with the number, actually, they, they burn the number into the body of the cow. If you see on the bottom, on, on her hind leg, you see a number there. They actually burn that number into her body. And they do it because they have so many cows to account for. So they will do it even, they do it to horses as well. They do this, the, of course, if somebody did that to me, I would be crying for days, but there's no anesthesia used. There's no, nothing used for the cows, for the pain. They burn, they cry, and we just do it because we, we have some accounting things to do, you know, with these animals. Uh, giving the milk like this, this, we think that that's all they are supposed to do. So yeah. despite all this pain and suffering, they just are kept brought in back again and again and again to milk them, milk them all the time. We think that they are just being born just for human's consumption. That's it. And that's all their life is. One thing we have to remember that every animal has its own purpose, including us. We are, we are an animal too. We all have our own purpose. We don't have to forget that we nobody's here. I am not here to serve another, another another animal. Similarly, another animal is not here to serve me. So when we say words like cows give us milk, they don't give us milk. We, we forcibly take the milk. Right. Right. Chickens give us eggs. No, they don't give us eggs. Unfortunately, since kindergarten, we have been, you know, our kids are being shown this uh, old McDonald had a farm you know, kind of, uh, you know, poetry, nursery rhymes, and we kind of socially like, you know, ingrain into the, their minds that it is okay to take it from these animals. Then what else is their purpose? Their purpose is only to give to us, you know? If, if the but, poetry had any, any connection with the reality, they would be sounding very different. And they say, well, the kid, chicken was killed and the baby was killed and the baby calf was sent for a will consumption. The poetry will be sounding very different. Unfortunately, right. that is more of a reality, but we hide those realities from our own children. And when we were children, those kind of realities were hidden from us. So we mm -hmm. grew up thinking that cow just gives milk. Just and like the first picture that you showed, Dr. Shah. Uh, the first picture of the mother cow and the calf. That's the image we are used to. Like, you know, that's the image, right. the beautiful yeah. image we are used to seeing. Right. Yeah. And right. that's what we associate milk with. But after seeing all these graphic realities, the irrefutable facts that, you know, in front of us, but it's look at just this, hard to believe. But look at this image where the, the male calves are being taken away to the slaughterhouse and their mother is running after them because there is a bond. The bond that we don't see it does not mean it does not exist. And it is so cruel and so agonizing to see this mother cow running after her own children being taken away, which she knows that she's never going to see them again. And we Why? kind of objectify them as milk, as beef, as, you know, veal, sort of forgetting the actual being. Why is this necessary? Why this much cruelty is not necessary just for our pleasures? Who drinks milk nowadays for need? Most of them milk products are consumed for purpose for enjoying the teas and ice creams and cookies and candies and all those are pleasure items for that we have to subject this kind of cruelty is really inhuman and also we had mentioned in our previous uh, you know shows also that um, we, the whole belief that you know milk vitamin d comes from milk and you get this calcium from milk and essential nutrients which are all kind of like you really, you don't have to rely on milk for all that. Yeah. Um, right, Dr. Shah, we had discussed that. If they do a research that uh, human kidneys are good for the cows, do you think anybody will donate <laughs> kidneys for the cow? It won't happen, right? So this is really a torture, slavery of the animals for our purpose. So this is just not right. This is uh, the, the picture from India where the cows are being taken for leather industry. And this is, this is how much... Uh, suffering they go through. And this is on the way.
to the storehouse. This is a typical image of the bullocks, the bell they call in India. They are being used in the farms to do the plowing. And this is how we see, but nobody understands what these bells come from. How do they derive? These are obviously, these are not the female cows because they cannot give the milk. So these are the male versions. They are the male cows. But what happened to them? Why do they come here? And if you really think about it, this is the real bull. This is the, how much power the, re, the real bull has. It takes so many people to really control them. How do they go from this to this? They become so docile and they become so cooperative on the fields to make us you know, do whatever we want to do to them. How does this happen? So the key thing is the difference between this bull and then these bulls is the removal of the, their male hormones. The male hormones are changed. The, basically, the male cow loses his power. And how do they do that? For that, believe it or not, and even it's still being practiced in villages where the tractors are not there uh, to, to plow the fields. This is the castration system they have devised. This is how the testicles are subjected uh, to the, the removal altogether. And they stop producing the, the testosterone, basically. And this is, this is how it is being done with the pliers like that. Of course, without anesthesia and with the total torture. You can imagine how, if this is being done to the male community, male is part of our community, but the testicles are removed, it would be the, one of the worst atrocity conducted on a human being, but this is routinely done, especially in the villages. Of course, where the factory farms are there, they really don't need to do use the bullocks for plowing the fields, obviously. So they are cut up and sold for meat consumption. And that's where the beef comes from, right? Where the beef comes from, correct. This castration thing, I just saw an image on Instagram today. It's also done, it's a similar thing that's done to pigs as well. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So it's a lot of torture that we don't even think twice. We don't even see these images. Like Kalindi, you said previously, we see these green pastures and beautiful sun shining, you know, cow and the calf and, you know, the chickens like fro yeah. frolicking around. But what we don't see is that they don't ever uh, see the sunlight. The only time they see the sunlight of, uh, you know, breathe fresh air is when they're on their way to slaughterhouses. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's how the, the whole irony of this whole thing is that we are shown a certain image. We, we are given a certain way of thinking, you know, by the advertising and by the people yeah. who do all these things to animals for us to feel a little less guilty about yeah. what we are doing. I was saying the labels like humane slaughter, you know, Humane and slaughter cannot go in the same sentence. It's an oxymoron. Right, you correct. cannot kill and say it's humane. You know, so we use words like that just to make us feel a little bit less guilty for our actions, saying organic meat or pasture raised, you know, beef right. or you know, free range, our, uh, free, yeah, range free yeah. range, uh, free range chickens. You know, uh, all of that is just just you know playing the words that are being played that, that that they use. The advertising and the meat industry is used to make us feel a little bit better about our choices, while you know I, they know that human beings are generally compassionate, right? We're born compassionate. Our kids, our babies, you know, they're born with that compassion. So we're taking it away from us, and we're making they're making us feel a little bit better about what we are doing to these animals. Sometimes I feel that our mental space is being uh, rented out, and without any rent, these tenants have gotten in. All these industries with their billboards and false information, they capture our mind in such a way that they make us believe that we are doing the right thing. And we really have this time for us to wake up and reoccupy our own mental space for our own thinking. Our thinking is actually done by them. They make us believe in them. And that's just not right. And sorry to interrupt, Dr. Shah, but you know, the image that you showed before of the bullocks, right? Yeah. Two bullocks in, uh, right. on a farm. That's the image we are used to seeing, like yes. like nicely on a standing on a farm. I, I feel I can never after seeing this, you know, I can never go back to think thinking that they are, you know, very happy standing there. It's, it's always the other way around. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Bidding goodbye to her baby again. This is a real uh, male calf that's going away. You know, as any mother, as I would, 
you know, totally feel sad about letting, and, and, and she probably even knows that she has no choice in this case. Mm, so sad. Uh, because the, the veil uh, is, uh, is coming from the young male calf and if they start getting bigger, that the male right. meat loses their its structure, texture. So they really keep them in the cages so that they don't grow. And, and then eventually they are slaughtered. When the order comes, they are immediately sent out. So that's one of the worst uh, thing. And a lot of restaurants are actually becoming more awake and alert about serving the wheel. So they, a lot of times they make it a point that they don't serve the wheel because they, it's really inhuman. Yeah. Let me go into the different section for the chicken. Chicken right. industry is no, not free from any more cruelties than what has been conducted on the cows. Nitu, you want to talk about this? Sure, yeah. So chicken happens to be one of the most abused animal on the planet. Even people who don't, who think that red meat is not good for them, or even out of guilt or whatever the reason might be, they will still consume uh, chicken, saying that, oh, it's white meat, it's probably good for right. me. It's, it's low in fat, you know, low fat, or uh, it's considered to be better than the red meat. Correct. And Dr. Shah can, can confirm that that's not true. You know, it's just as bad. Yeah. I mean, the cholesterol wise, all the antibiotics wise, the hormones, actually chickens are very smart animals. And there was a study done on them. They said that chickens and we, we considered them, them stupid animals, but they actually have a capacity to identify 64 of their close relatives, like brothers and sisters and uncles and niece and all that. The study was actually a very good biological study done. And they realized that chickens are very smart, but uh, we really don't pay attention to their smartness. We just eat them up like anything else. And uh, the meat is a meat, definitely. All animals are made out of cholesterol and uh, cholesterol is fat. So whatever part of the animals we eat, we're gonna have cholesterol. And cholesterol being fat also brings a lot of uh, fat soluble chemicals, which are coming from the animals versus plants, which are water based. So all those chemicals get into our body and cause the cancer because they dissolve in our body fat and then they're continuously being released. So, so yeah, there is no really better cholesterol wise, maybe a little less compared to the meat, but the cruelty wise is really no different or worse, I think. So this last week, uh, we were actually trying to save some chickens. We saved about hundreds of chickens uh, last week from a, a religious ritual where chickens are sacrificed. And I happened to be in close quarters with these chickens who we rescued from that ritual. And I realized they are just as scared. I remember like uh, we had uh, about six or seven chickens in a box. And when we put them in the box, they were so scared. They're shivering and they huddled together, put mm. their... Uh, head under one, each other, like they're trying to hide, they're trying to put their face under, mm. out of fear. So all of those things that I and you and all of us feel that fear is there, is prevalent. It's the, you know, we, we cannot say that they, they don't have any feelings. They have. They do. So as we went to the farm and we took them out, you know, to sanctuaries, they were actually happy. You could see that happiness in them and they separated and they were like, you know, mm. inspecting the, the place. Right. So, they are no different from your dog or cat. They're no different from you and I, you know? So unfortunately, because these animals cannot speak or, or whatever they, little they speak, we cannot understand. We think of them as uh, non-feeling, you know, but they're just, just as sentient. Actually, um, I was uh, in the, uh, on a cruise in the Greek Isles, you know, and then we were on one of the islands and, you know, like the cruise stays there for several hours and then we make, were going around and we were, there was a, a hill that we all climbed. We were like three, four friends of ours. It was a beautiful scene, you know, where there's a farmer and they had all the farms set up and all that. So we were very happy to see a countryside. And, uh, and the, the farmer was a very happy guy. He came and talked to us. Very, very, uh, you know, really calm and very enjoyable. And smile on his face and all that. And then suddenly he went inside the house and was coming out. And suddenly we started seeing that these chickens were starting making so much noise, which were all in their cages and all that. I said, what happened? We didn't do anything. He says, no, 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 it's me. Then he, he took out a big uh, knife from his behind. And so almost 200 feet away, the, the chickens knew that he's coming to kill them. And that was so sad. So we, it just turned us off. We walked away. 
So the, it is for real. The feelings are for real, but we just don't care because of our likes for this kind of meat consumption. It's unfortunate. Exactly. The violence is a, is a result of likes, our desires. The more right. desires you have, it makes you more uh, kind of callous towards the suffering of other animals. So it's time that we should really rethink our likes and dislikes, you know. True. So, and when you say uh, the last slide said free range eggs, free range, free range chicken, right? Yeah. Now, free range is again another word that we we just say or uh, the marketing, you know, of any uh, meat industry will say so that you don't feel as bad. So, what free range is exactly what what is on the screen right now? Yeah. So, back in the day, or or the ones that are not free range, pretty much are in in small coops, one on top of each other, you know. So, uh, in in free range, they're still one on top of each other, but there is no walls in between. They're, the coop is just bigger. You know, mm. this is what this is what it looks like. Do you see even even a space like a few inches where the animals can move? They cannot. No, no. Yeah, no. and so they they peck each other because they they feel frustrated as I would if I was standing in a very crowded area, like even a train like ride where I am from uh, Mumbai, right? So I've been in very crowded trains, and I know how annoying that is. But yeah. this is like lifetime. Right. I'm only talking about half an hour to ride, which is so annoying already. This is from the time they're born till the time they die. This is yeah. their life. Now, in order to facilitate true. that, there's something that's called de-beaking. Mm. You know, because of course they peck each other. These animals will peck each other uh, out of frustration. Okay, so yeah. So sure. yeah, this is the this is the process. It's a hot blade that goes over the baby chick's beak. And it takes it off altogether without any anesthesia, of course. And this mm. is only so that they don't peck each other. And this is the end result. Look at such an innocent chick. Now has no beak at all. And they're trying to save uh, these chickens from, you know, killing each other. Because if they keep on pecking, the pecking is a result of stress generated from such suffering. And so because of the beaks, they end up killing each other. And that's a loss to the, to the business. Just because of that, they just remove the, the beaks. It's very unfortunate. Yeah, what is a bird without a beak? Imagine. Yeah. So we, we put them through all this trauma just to have a few minutes of taste in our mouth. And even like this picture, if you see the regular chicken, right? The way it's supposed to be or the way the weight of the chicken is. In 1957, I believe there were no hormones being used. And slowly the hormones were introduced. So the chicken went, the same chicken went from 905 grams to almost double to 1808 grams. And uh -huh. now from that, like it's almost four times from 1957 to like, it's almost like 4,200 grams. The reason for that is because you want more meat. So they are stuffed with, they're genetically modified to eat a lot. So the yeah. chickens that we saved. Um, last week were all genetically modified. There were still babies, but there were only four weeks. But they were so they were as big as the first chicken picture that you see. So they were they still had a lot of room to grow, and by the time they are adults, they mm -hmm. will be so big that they will not be able to stand on their own two feet. Mm -hmm. So the sanctuaries that we gave these chickens to actually will have will have to put them on a diet so they don't die from overeating because yeah. they're genetically modified that they have to keep pecking and eating and eating and eating. So they become so big that they most most of them cannot even walk on their legs. What a cruel way of uh, doing the business. Plus the, um, plus the you know, antibiotics, the steroids that are, they're continuously injected, I mean. And this is uh, the, the uh, condition of their skin because they are continuously kept in the cages, the one which are caged, their uh, the the torso keeps on rubbing against the wires, and they invariably have these ulcerations and things like that, and frequently infected. In fact, and then when the chicken meat comes in, nobody is really there to look whether it's an infected part or not. They just are sold, and then you end up eating it also. Also, okay. tumors, right? A lot yes. of these yes. animals they suffer yes. from huge tumors. Yep. In fact, I saw a video uh, of a slaughterhouse where they were just piercing those like with the, with the knife like cutting those things open the pus was flowing out but there was still the chickens were still on the uh, on the you know the I, do, I don't know what you call this line where it just keeps going in one like it's a machine that takes them right yeah, yeah. so it, it 
they were just cutting those 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 ulcers or those boils open letting mm. the pus flow out but they were still being used for food wow. you know imagine all of that stuff just goes in our body you know so in and and then we then we talk about like when the hormones go in our body we talk about like puberty coming a little bit sooner right mm. uh, especially with girls yeah, um, nice. all of these cancers and everything i mean where are these going to go they are going to go in your body right of course because yeah. if they try to remove those things it's a loss to the business so they don't care it's weight to weight it's pound to pound it's a um, profit that's all really matters so all this suffering is it really worth you know when you eat your chicken wings do we really think about how much suffering the chickens go through no we don't because we are so fixated on the taste of the chicken wings and that's what i say our likes are the, our desires are the cause for callousness and really it's time to wake up and rethink the strategy of life you know yeah so this is what this is the rosy picture that's shown green grass green big grass, big healthy looking chickens you know sunlight all of that stuff the reality is they they're standing on their own poop uh with a broken leg most likely in this case you know the wings are fallen off they're very mm. bad shape and this is not this is not uh, out of regular this is not like one off picture this is how exactly all the chickens are going to look Mm. it is it is not something that you say oh the one chicken out of 100 no this is exactly 100 out of 100 and we don't see this all we see is that nicely cooked food that comes to the plate uh, or to your plate which smells good looks good has has been spiced up or whatever in whatever way cooked and given to us and so i presume it's the same with the with pork uh, you know with the pigs the same similar condition sure. similar treatment um you know with uh, with goats lamb all all those uh, you know all those animals animal farm that go through the same treatment treatment on an um, factory farms yeah so actually the all this plight of all these uh, female chickens of course because they are the one who lay the eggs uh, you think that this is atrocious so compared to that you would really think that the male counterpart probably would not have to go through suffering and you think that they are better off because they don't have to be subjected to such a suffering and i think you may be right because they are killed immediately but the the torture methods which are being used to kill them is really atrocious they are kept on the conveyor belts can you imagine the chicks if you are your child is on such a conveyor belt look at this they are so innocent and and fluffy and very cute looking chicks but they know that they are going to be killed so they are trying to hold on to their own life is this really worth it and this is where they end up with all the eggs and their part of the the eggs which are useless along with the chicks which are flying there right now and they are all go through the grinding machine and they just are discarded through the garbage this is really atrocious so sometimes between the two cruelties you ask yourself whether the male is it better to be a male chick or or a female chick i don't know i don't know that's an answer i don't think i can answer is it's good to be both as long as you get to live and the world allows you to live this is look just look at the crowding on these yeah. these birds now we'll switch the gears to the beef yeah so so the beef if as you are aware right 1 kg of beef will only feed two people but to to have that cow grow to a certain size you have to keep the cow fed to produce 1 kg of beef a cow has to consume 16 kg of grain which feeds 20 people now if you think about this whole picture don't you see that the world hunger problem would actually be solved if we if we don't if we eliminate the meat part of it Correct. right and we get, we we i mean human beings are meant to eat grains right yeah. so we give the what what we are meant to eat to us and take take care of these billions of people who are suffering in third world countries who don't have any food to eat even in a country like america there are people who don't have two square meals to eat right yeah. and we are feeding the animals yeah. so that they can feed two people i mean that makes no That's sense right. yeah Uh, Nitu Nitu was not with us when we talked about this rule of ten. Do you realize that, Kalindi? Yes, that that's, that's exactly what I'm thinking when I'm looking at this picture. People were such twenty people, ten times. 
Uh -huh. That rule of 10, again, true to the words, to the numbers, down to the right thing. So like we were talking about that the farms, the 70, 80% of the farms are growing food only to feed the animals and it's not worth it. Amazon rainforests are being cut so that they can grow That's more grains for the animals because as human population is increasing, so is the need for these, these animal proteins, right? Yeah. So in order to feed the growing population of humans, Amazon is being cut. Um, and Amazon happens to be our lungs. I mean, without Amazon forest, we don't have oxy enough oxygen to breathe. But at that, at this point, we're not even thinking about that. Only we, only thing we're thinking about is 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 animal protein, meat. What kind of like thinking is this? Where we yeah. don't think about our own. Like it's like it's like the story that in India we have the shake chili. Like you're cutting the same branch that you're sitting on. Yeah. You if you don't have if you don't know if you don't have the the, the oxygen. What are you going to be doing in this world, right? Plus, all of this uh, animal agriculture is increasing greenhouse gases. Gases, right? And if you put all of the transportation, like planes, ships, cars, trucks, everything that you can think of that runs on gas, if you take all of that together on one side and take all of the animal agriculture on one side, animal agriculture, hands down, is much, much bigger producer of pollution than right. all of these vehicles. So me and you taking shorter showers, uh, taking public transportation, you know, trying to recycle, reuse, and all of that, all of the stuff that everybody's talking about is not even going to make a dent. Yeah. What is going to make a dent is by going vegan. Let these animals live. Don't grow them for humans. You right. know? Our food choices. Yeah. Right. Just like the first picture Dr. Shah said, that, you know, our... That's the most important. Our food choices matter. Our yeah, food choices exactly. matter to our own health, to the health of animals, to the health of the environment. Yeah. And some of these uh, graphic images are coming up next is uh, the evidence of tumors. These are cancers present in the beef. And uh, I had one of my patients, she used to work uh, in the meat department in the, in the supermarket. And she was telling me, I said, Dr. Shah, you're right. Uh, but luckily, my boss is, is a good soul. He will remove uh, these uh, tumors before selling it to the public. But she was not sure how many people actually do that. He was one of the rare ones, you know. And when they come in and the meat is cooked, you don't even notice and you end up eating these cancers. Is it really, is that what we want in life, eating cancer cells? Exactly. There's more cancers. Right. It's like, gross. It's so gruesome. Look at this. These are all wow. tumors. So unfortunate. Like uh, all of us pretty much, I think human beings are generally good souls. We don't realize what happens behind the scenes. You know, when you say some people are better than the others, definitely. But I think most of us come from a place of not having enough knowledge. You know, yeah. we, I don't think anybody wakes up in the morning to say, today I'm going to hurt somebody in order, in order for me to eat. I think yeah. we all go with a good intention. You know, only thing is that we don't have enough knowledge or information available to us to know these things, right? Right. Yeah. That's why we're bringing these slides to you so you can wake up and see what is going on behind the walls of the animal industry. And on purpose, they hide all these things so that it does not affect their bottom line. So it's time that we should take the life of our own in our own hands, you know. Yeah, and why why wouldn't they have these things? The animals are kept in such filthy conditions. Do you know most of the dairy cows and the beef cows are actually standing knee deep in their own own poop and pee? So many insects on them. Sure. They are constantly. They have no other place to go. They're tied very tightly to the to the metal uh, cages, and they they have no place to move. So they're just standing and peeing and pooping in the same over and over again it's so strong the smell of that area is so strong the ammonia that if you were to go there if you didn't have a uh, oxygen mask you would actually pass out you would need that kind of thing it is so strong so why wouldn't these animals have these illnesses which yeah. we are actually also consuming once uh, we visited in morocco they had a tannery and it was very popular it was in the city of Fez, which had been this is going on for old thousands of years this tannery was around so we we noticed that and when they took us there and they were you know of course all these leathers which have been collected and all that 
but you couldn't walk in. The smell was just horrible because they would uh, clean them, all the skin hides and all that. And they gave us the, the twigs of uh, mint. To, we had to keep it close to our nose so that we can all walk around and make it a little bit bearable. And that's where all these atrocities were there. So it's just, you can imagine, this is not just the, the decaying meat, but this is you're talking about poop and peep and all those things. Uh, it's just, it's unbelievable. If you were to fall in that, those water bodies which are surrounding these slaughterhouses, probably will not survive. You will never be able to come out alive. Yeah. It's so pungent. It is so strong yeah. that it will, it will kill you for sure. Yeah. And sheep and goat, the same story goes on. Mm -hmm. So when, you know, the Easter comes and they have these baby lambs being killed. Yes. You know, when I look at a baby lamb, I always think of it as a cute little thing. Like Mary had a little lamb, that kind exactly. of a cuteness, right? right? I never thought, I didn't know about it uh, till, till many, many years of my life that actually baby lambs are being used to eat, to be eaten on a certain festival, you know, similar mm -hmm. to what turkeys are used for um, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So right. it just breaks my heart that we don't look at these animals when on the menu it says lamb. You know, I don't know how the image doesn't come to your mind that lamb is just a fluffy little frolicking, you know, jumping around little animal, right? He's just a baby. Why don't we think of it like that? And we think of it like lamb. Wow, delicious. Let me get lamb chops. Yeah, you know? we never think of the baby at that time. Yeah, and that is the disconnect. Look at these these animals, right? So many times in India, I've passed by slaughterhouses, the roadside, you know, small time slaughterhouses. And these, you know, these animals would be hanging like this. Goat I like couldn't... The goats, is it the goat? Yes, the goats. And I would be feel, I would feel so disgusted just looking at them. They are beheaded, you know, and they are they're not. Yeah, they're beheaded, and they they sometimes have babies thrown out. Like, it, there's one more thing I had to actually mention that many a times these animals actually when they go to slaughterhouses they're already pregnant. They are made pregnant actually, mm. because all of this meat goes by weight. So these animals, if they have another animal inside of them, they weigh much much more. Wow. Right. So I've seen so many videos where they cut open the cow and there's a little, in the inside the pouch there's a little unborn calf and there is, it just gets discarded. It goes in the you know garbage. Mm. That is the kind of thing we're talking about, you know. Like we for us when we are pregnant, like when I was pregnant, I was asked to take so much care of me, eat this, don't eat that, don't walk fast, don't wear heels. But when it comes to these animals, don't their babies matter? You know, I have seen with my own two eyes like uh, in India I had seen um, a butcher shop and a baby um, goat just thrown outside it was dead because it wasn't it wasn't formed fully mm -hmm. but these are the things that we do to animals without any remorse yes and uh, imagine the the plight of the workers who actually work there because psychologically they have to put up with this all the time they don't think anything about it uh, I had one patient you know he had been working in the animal uh, factories all day long and I just casually asked him how do you feel at the end of the day and he told me he says doc to come home and meditate because I know I'm committing a lot of crimes a lot of scenes I just have to balance because I do it because it's part of my job but I sometimes I wish I did not have to it was so sad you know and I had another uh, patient of mine he had an, uh, made an appointment and he called me he says Dr. Shah I'm running late and can I come straight from Burke I said yeah I don't care. I don't see any problem. I don't, I didn't remember what kind of work he was doing. So I said, okay. And here he walks in into the office with the blood stains all over. His clothes were all work clothes and things like that. And I said, what happened to you? He says, doc, this is what I do. I work in the factories and, uh, and this is, uh, this is my day to day life. I said, really? He said, what do you do? So he says, I do in the butchers, you know, once you know the, how the meat and everything is taken off, and then whatever is left behind after that, I collect those things because each and every component of the wow. animal has a market and I collect them, put in a drum. So You know what it makes me think, Neetu, like we are so compassionate about if we have a pet, we have a pet cat, we have a pet dog, whatever, like they are a family to us. They are like everything, like, you know, we get so emotionally attached and how do we not feel yeah. You know, about what do you think, Neetu? Like, we don't feel that these animals deserve any better than a pet that we love so much. I think at this point, we should like wind up and maybe continue a little more because we have a lot of more slides to come. 
So why don't you uh, go to the procedure with <laughs> the viewers so we can keep them tuned for the next show. Right. So, um, you know, today we showed you uh, the disturbing side of how the beef, chicken, goat, all those meats come to your table. We hope that this sparks some more curiosity. You go and, you know, on yourself, do some research, look at some videos and find out more about it. And we hope that this curiosity sparks another, another aspect of, you know, sort of thinking, rethinking your diet. There is absolutely everything available in the plant-based uh, diet that will satisfy your hunger, your, uh, you know, your taste buds, flavor and everything. So Dr. Shah, Neetu, thank you so much for, you know, sharing with us all these facts, these really disturbing facts, but such eye openers. And friends, we will continue next time with even more, you know, facts about animal fact or, or factory farming. Thank you very much. And you, hope to see you guys in next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.